Yes, I am. Thanks for reminding me. Yes. Uh, okay. Right, Brother Pat, please could you read for me? Third John chapter one, verses one and two, and especially uh, verse two. The reason why I'm reading this, brethren, we want to have a balance in our teaching and we want to be sure that we are, uh, what we do is for the edification of the church, of the ministry in Jesus' name. Um, so um, before I go into the lesson, I'm just going to ask um, Brother Pat to read for me that those two verses, First John. Third John, I should say, Third John, one verses one and two, and I want you to bear in mind those of us amongst us who are sick, and also who are going through the going through. Brother Pat, please. Bless you, bless you, Elder. Uh, third Epistle of John, verse one and two. The Elder unto the well beloved Gaius whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. Did us read those verses from me, one and two. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius. Um, I just now spoke to Shirley. She's Whom I love in truth, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. The Lord bless you, Brother Pat. We have amongst us, praise God, um, Brethren who are sick, praise God, according to the flesh, according in their bodies, the, the sickness that's raging. And we want to the church to understand that there's a reason for the sickness. And this is what we're going to sort of establish tonight. And hopefully, as we would uh, go through the scriptures that, the, that you will see on the screen, you will also be blessed, and not only be blessed, but you will be comforted, praise God, that provision has been made for both the body and the soul. Amen. For body, soul, and spirit. I think there's another scripture that talks about what Paul speaks about body, soul, and spirit. So we are feeding or uh, trying, we'll be establishing that God looks after both the body and the soul. But most importantly, it is the soul, praise God, or the spirit that is important to us and that we should bear in mind that is God's main concern. Um, Jesus preached for day, many days and when he looked, he saw that the people were hungry and he provided food, not only for the, uh, the, 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 the soul, but he also provided food for the body. So that is the basis of we are be we will be um, looking at as we go through these um, less scriptures for the rest of the month. The Lord bless you, and I ask that you continue to pray for me that utterance will be given. Our topic today is healing. Healing. And that healing is derived in, or we get healing by the stripes of Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. 
Jesus of Nazareth. And the question is, where does healing come from or what is healing? What is healing or what needs to be healed? Praise God. After this, continue to pray. Healing is to, we have four points and hopefully we can actually um, go through them for the rest of the month, but the four points and what I would like to emphasize on is that these four points throughout the teaching. Healing is to make healthy, whole or sound or restore health free from ailment. Point two, to free from evil, cleanse and purify. To restore former things and to bring to an end or conclusion that which is going wrong, you bring an end to it and you conclude by be bringing it into its original form. In other words, healing, restore. Nothing basically is made new, but it is restored back to its original state. Amen. And its original function. The man's hand was withered, so he wasn't able to lift it up as the original um use is for when his hand was restored he was able to lift it up and give god thanks he was able to lift up the 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 the, 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 the put his hand to use so that he could feed his mouth feed, feed um himself through through his mouth so we are looking at going back to its original form Amen. Making it healthy, making it whole, making it sound, restored to health, free from amen, free from evil, cleanse, purify, to restore former things and to bring to an end or things to an end or a conclusion. Praise God. Brother Pat, could you get ready to read from this thing? Okay. In the beginning, so you can see my screen. Can you see everything on my screen? Yes. Okay, Brother Pat, please. In the beginning, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis 1, verse 31. Amen. Now, the original form is that when God looked at creation in the beginning, the scripture says he saw everything that he had made. And he looked and he admired the work that he has done. He said it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So even today as we look on the evening, this wonderful day, praise God with the sunshine. The next day is going to be the next movement or the next event is going to be the morning. So that continues even unto this day. God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God himself knows the beginning because he told Moses in the beginning. So God is outside of time. He knows when everything 
started. Bless his name. Disobedience brought death. But a path. Genesis 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Genesis 3 verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thy return to the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Amen. The reminder tonight is this, is that disobedience that was that Adam did brought death. Paul says that by one man's um, disobedience, sin came into the world. So then, because of the disobedience of Adam, death came into the world, or sin came into the world, and the wages of sin is death, which makes it this possible now. And please bear with me that with death comes along sickness, aging, and evil. Sickness, aging, ill health, and evil. But if you notice in the first slide that I've used that God knew before the disobedience took place, the state of the world then. We are now living in what is referred to as the fallen world, where death is still, praise God, pronounced on the body, amen, and because death is still pronounced on the man's body, praise God, you'll find what we experience, are experiencing, we are experiencing growth, we are experiencing as we get, as we grow, we get weaker, we age, we're not the same we were, say, 65 years ago. Amen. Living for 65 years, we find that I am aging. I am getting old. My features are changing as I get older. My strength is waning. It's because the curse that is on the body, praise God, is taking set, is operating. That is still working. That pronunciation on the man, praise God, is still working unto this day. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree which I command thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So everything that we are now experiencing in our bodies, the the aging, the ill health, and and work and, and, and sweating and all that is because of the disobedience caused by Adam, which he has brought onto the world. So 
we are now in what I would term as the fallen world. So we are experiencing those. But in God's mind, there is a healing to be had. And as we would go into the scriptures, we would look basically why it is necessary to advocate healing in our lives. Why there is healing, because God knows the origin of man and know how healthy man was when he created it, created man. Remember the scripture says, and God looked on everything and saw that it was good. Amen. Wages of sin. Today we are complaining of oh, people are complaining about everything is going up in price. Praise his name. And in a, a loaf of bread, his price of bread has gone up. I read in one portion of scripture, in, in that portion of scripture, in the news article that pasta has gone up, the price of pasta has gone up by 50%. You know, so even pasta is going up in price. But guess what? The wages for sin is still dead. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Although the wages sin has been pronounced on the man and death is pronounced because he has, he has become disobedient, the gift of God runs alongside it, but the gift of God comes through one person or the life, eternal life comes through one person. In other words, Jesus is crucified to introduce or to take man back to eternal life or to take, back, take man back to immortality. I hope you understand what I'm saying. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sorry, brother, but I shouldn't have read it. Earlier. Now, because we are living in a fallen world, the blessing of this that is in this world today is that in our spirits, or in our minds, praise God, there is a hope that God has established in the, the believer. And the hope is this, that alongside death, there is a hope of eternal life. So gaining eternal life is a process of healing, bringing to an end or bringing to a conclusion of the pronunciation of death upon the mankind. We are blessed or we are the believer is blessed and fortunate enough to find, praise God, the solution to good health. And the, the good health comes through the healing process that Christ himself suffered. Hence, we look on the term when, it says, when the scripture declares, by his stripes, we are healed. That hope is in the stripes or the healing process that Christ has brought the whole creation into, not just mankind, but the whole creation. If you notice in the scriptures, when God pronounced the, the death upon the mankind, um, upon mankind, the, the earth itself was cursed. Amen. It brings forth thorns and thistle, which is a form of judgment even upon the earth. Praise God. Creation groaning, both man and 
creation, or is the earth, the world? Where the fact could you read from it, please? Okay. Romans 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together <coughs> until now. Amen. So what Paul is saying here, it is not just the man that is that ha, that was cursed, or the judgment was not just pronounced on the man. But as you see in Genesis, judgment was also pronounced on the earth, where it would bring forth thorns and thistles, and would find, make it difficult for man to yield or to work on it and to bring forth food for himself because he would have to work hard in order to get food from the earth. In other words, the earth would resist, praise God, giving food to the man. So there is a, is a, there's a conflict between the man and the earth. And it's only when the man actually decides to, 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 to look to God that God would give the man a certain kind of hope. And that hope is in the restoration of the whole creation. So the creation understanding this is now made subject, praise God, to the hope that is in Christ. Because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the the sorry. So the the man and the earth is now looking to God to restore them back to its original state. Praise God. And God looked upon creation and he saw that everything was good and it pleased him that everything was good he was pleased he rejoiced in his in the works of his hands because the creature itself also is shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god so god even though he made the judgment on the uh, on the man there is a provision praise god that runs alongside the judgment and if the man can find this liberty praise god he the the the, the, the burden of death will be taken off of him and then that's why you find the prophets such as david he says he he restoreth my soul he also causes death now to be just a shadow because the child of God has found as liberty, praise God, where he's free from the from the the the, um, the the judgment that is pronounced upon him, even though he would understand that his body is going back to the dust, but he also understands that there is a provision for the soul because there is a new body for it. I hope to please pray for me, brethren, as you, as you listen. And here is it. Brother Pat, subjects of vanity. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, 
the redemption of our body. Amen. The vanity that we are subject to. Amen. We're living in a fallen world, fallen world, a world that is a fallen and is subjected to, be, to a massive change. And in that subjection, we find ourselves, as I mentioned earlier, that we are aging. The way I look at 20, at, 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 at 17, praise God, I don't look that way anymore. So, and when I look in the mirror, I find, I see a change happening. I find in my body there is also a sickness, diabetes, prostrate enlargement, and so forth and so forth. In the beginning, it was not so. So I am subjected to that. And because, but because I find myself in the will of God or accepting Christ as my personal savior, God has given to me, praise God, a kind of hope that as I groan because of the aging and the sickness and the high blood pressure and the back pain and whatever it is, there is a hope inside of me because of the first being of the first fruit of the spirit. We are waiting for the adoption to which there is a redemption of our body. In other words, though the body is going back to the dust, praise God, because of the various illnesses and the curse because of death. I am still hoping, Job says, yet in my flesh, I shall see God. So there is a new body coming, praise God, which the believer, though he's subjected to sickness and aging and whatever, is hoping to receive. And that's why we open up with the scriptures in First John, in 3 John 1, that John is saying to Gaius, his beloved Gaius, praise God, that even though you're, you, 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 you're not at your best, praise God, you still have that hope that as your spirit that is given over to God, as your soul is given over to God, praise God, your, the hell that runs alongside it, you would have good health and that you would prosper even as your soul is prosperous. So that is the hope that we are, we, we are in and that we don't become subject to the vanity. In other words, locked up in this thing, say, well, and there is no hope, but we have a hope. Hence, even Paul, Paul picked it up and says that when one passes from this life, Praise God. We should not weep as not having hope, but we should weep. We should understand that there is a hope of a new body where there will be no more sickness, there will be no more tears, there will be no more, no more parting away. So even though we are subject to vanity, we have a hope. Praise his name. Subject to hope. Subjects to vanity, subject to hope. Amen. Uh, Brother Pat, please. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Genesis 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Amen. Now, subject to hope. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, by one man's uh, disobedience, praise God, sin entered into the world, death entered into the world. 
Paul says also in another portion of scripture, praise God, this same Romans, that the same man who was subjected, subjected us to death, there's also a man who now gives us or subjects us to hope. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. When God pronounces judgment on Adam and Eve, praise God. Remember the scripture, the portion of scripture when it says, the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Amen. And we understand from scripture that that seed is Christ. So from the beginning, even though judgment is pronounced on the man, there is also a pronunciation of hope alongside the judgment. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, the subjection of hope in hope, the subjection in hope is this also, composites of this. It was important that God had to drive the man out of the garden. Bless his name. It was to the benefit of the man that he is driven out of the garden. Because in the state that he is in because of his disobedience to God's word commandment, had he went back in or was allowed back into the garden, he would have also taken of the tree of life, praise God, and according to this verse, he would live forever, amen, in a sinful state. Bless his name. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, now is the time that I have to run him out, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever in a condemned state. He would have become, or the man would have become, praise God, a son of perdition. The term perdition, praise God, is mean that the person is destined to be punished at the, at the will, any time at the will of the one who pronounced the judgment. That is perdition because there is no restoration for perdition. Amen. In the soul. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live together, live forever. So, God, praise God, has now got to subject the man in hope, the same man that is pronounced, judgment is passed, passed on him. The man has now been placed in a position of hope where he will be restored. In other words, his soul will be healed. Bless his name. Bless his name. 
tree of life. Now we've got to look at this carefully. The fruit of their righteousness, of the, of the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth soul is wise. Now, man has become disobedient and God has a plan to win back, win the soul of man. In other words, restore the soul of man to the state where he, when he looked on his creation and saw that everything was good. God now takes it back upon himself to restore man back to the position where he had created man, where man dwell in immortality and where God himself had fellowship with man and the two communicated together, sweet fellowship. They would meet each other in the cool of the day and they would have fellowship. Let's look at that. <clears throat> but apart from you can read Genesis 2 verse 8. <clears throat> and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Here's a question. Praise God. Where is the tree of life now? And that's a question. And the Lord God planted <coughs> a garden eastward in Eden. There he put the man whom he had formed. Praise God. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. Also in the garden, you would think for the, from, this, from this verse of scripture, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good, of knowledge, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Watch this, brethren. Adam is in the garden. Bless his name. Watch it carefully. Look at this verse carefully. And in the garden, the tree, every tree that you can think of is in the garden. That is pleasant in the sight and good for food. By looking at this verse, it says to me, praise God, that Adam and Eve had not yet gotten to the tree of life in the midst of the garden. And that they were convinced or persuaded to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So before they were, they could eat of the tree of life, they went to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And now you can see why God, praise his name, had to prevent them from eating of the tree of life, praise God, because they have now fallen into sin. 
So it was important for God and for the believer, Adam and Eve, not to eat of the tree of life in their disobedient state. Because had they eaten of the tree of life, according to the verse that we looked earlier on in the previous slide, they would be living forever in a sinful state. So they ate, you would deem from this, that they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil before they ate or before they even could consider eating the, from the tree of life. And that is why, bless his name, that God had to prevent them from eating of the tree of life. And as I mentioned earlier, had they eaten of the tree of life, they would be living forever with the knowledge of good and evil and that they could not be restored. Bless his name. The question is today, amen, I ask myself, where is the tree of life now and what is stopping praise god the man from eating of the tree of life amen is the man completely prevented from the tree of life or is there a protection or a hindrance that will stop the man in his sinful state from eating of the tree of life. Let us look. Punished in order to restore. And if I take out the word restore, bless his name, I could add I could replace the, the, the term restore with heal or heal. Punish in order to heal. Praise his name. Question, another question. What is it that's being healed? Is it the body or is it the soul? The soul, the body is condemned to the dust already. So judgment is passed on the, the body. But the judgment has not yet been passed upon the soul. Brother Pat, could you read from this um, there for me, please? Because I just want to explain the context from which I'm coming from. Genesis 3, verse 22 and 23. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Right. The man, the tree of life, does two things, or three things, why it's called the tree of life. You can eat, and the main thing of eating of the tree of life is that it has the ability, praise God, to cause you to live forever. Amen? It is not the body, praise God, because the body is con con uh, condemned to die. But there's a part of man that has the, is capable of living forever because that part of man comes from, from God. Amen, from God himself. He says, come let us make man after our own image. The brother Earl went through the, the whole thing in last week, a couple of weeks ago. Amen. Now, in order to restore the man, praise God. God had to send him out 
from the garden in order to fulfill the curse that is upon the body, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Out of the garden, praise God, he's going to get sick. Out of the garden, he's going to get um, all sorts of diseases covering him. Amen. But out of the garden, there is the, uh, there is the process of hope which a man is subjected to. I hope I've said that right. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Thus thou art to the dust thou shalt return. By the sweat of thy brow thou shalt eat and then things like that. So the man is chased out of garden, pray out of the garden of Eden in order to fulfill the curse that is on the body. And in the meantime, praise God, guess what he, God does to the tree of life? Punish in order to restore. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Cherubims, praise God, and flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. What are cherubims? Who are cherubims? Cherubims are the angels, praise God, that stands, as we understand from scripture, before the throne of God, amen, and protects the way, praise God, to the tree of life. So I am looking at right now that the cherubims are protect, is protecting the tree of life. And from my understanding, if one could correct me if I'm wrong, that the cherubims also stands around the throne of God. So the question is, where is the tree of life right now? That's the question. Where is it? Is it on earth? Or is it in heaven, the tree of life, where is it? Brother Pat, could you close for me on Revelation 22, I believe it is, 22 verses, somewhere up the top of the verse of the chapter, Revelation 20, 22, and this is my last slide for tonight. We want us to reflect, praise God, as we go next week, we will reflect on where is the tree of life. And we now come into the process of the restoration of the soul. Amen. And the restoration of the man's soul, praise God, and also the new body. I think it's Revelation 22. This is the- Revelation 22, one and two. One and two. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, cherubim, we understand from scripture that the cherubims are special angels. 
um, they're very dangerous. Amen. And, and, and they have within their position swords and they have eyes that go to and fro protecting the way of the tree of life. If we, if we look in um, also of Ezekiel chapter 10 and we see that the process by which these angels work and they work under the auspice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So um, we're going to stop here, but before we stop tonight, and we'll continue this next Thursday night, I'm just going to ask Brother Pat to read Revelation 22, 1 and 2, I believe it is. Brother Pat. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Brethren, we're going to stop here. I hope and trust that you've been blessed. And then you also would understand the context on which this teaching is based. And may you be blessed. May your hearts continue to look towards the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Lord bless you this evening. Praise God. We close here. God bless you, Brother Alex, and no, Brother Lee. Sure. God bless you, Cheryl. Can you close for us, please? God bless you, Brother Lee. God bless you. God bless you, brethren. Praise God. Can I ask um, Sister, Sister Cynthia? Sister Cynthia there? Yes, I'm here. Could you just pray the closing prayer for our elder um, in the, you know, just the closing prayer at this time? Amen, amen, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, the most righteous, eternal Father. Lord, another time we do humbly come before you. We wanna give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor for another day, oh God, for spending our life. Lord, we wanna thank you again for waking us up again this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, even as your word come to us, Lord, that we continue to look to the hills, Lord. Because as you told us, oh God, that the outer man, Lord, oh God, is going back to the dust. But, oh God, the inner man must be renewed daily, Lord Jesus. We thank you, oh God, even for your minister. This night, Lord, as you will minister your word, we pray that you continue to strengthen him, oh God. Lord, we pray to touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Oh, God. Now, sing best to rest of your people again, Lord. The different various, oh, God, ailments, Lord. We are passing through, but God, we know with you, oh, God, all things are possible, Lord Jesus. We pray that you cover us, come to guide us, oh, God. Fly the trap of the adversary, we pray. Oh, God, remove our hindrances, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we look to you again, we give you every glory, every honor, every praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless, God bless you, Sister Cynthia. God bless you, brethren. Can we take our mics off and just, just give God praise for his goodness? Thank you, Thank you Lord, for your goodness. Thank, Thank you. you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your ministry this evening. Praise your holy name. God bless you again, brethren. God bless you, brother, brother Leroy, again for ministering to us. Praise God. And this time, our Sunday school lesson on Sunday will be Why the Holy Spirit Came. Our reading will be from St. John 14, verse 15 through 18. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, the golden text is St. John 15 and verse 26. Praise God. And also just a reminder that I believe on the 10th of June will be the funeral service of our brother David's father. Amen. Amen. Um, so just, just to keep, keep you abreast of that. God bless you, brethren, and have a blessed week. Keep your, each other in prayer. Amen. And can we just repeat together? Let the words of our mouth... And the meditation of our hearts be accepted in the will of our God bless you, brethren. Good night, brethren. Good night. God bless you. Good night. 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 Cynthia, bless you, sister. Good night. 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 Good Bless you. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bless you. Bless you. Good Good night. Good night. Bless you. Good night. Good night. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Billy. Bless you, Sanad. Bless you, Sister Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Pastor Shirley. Bless you.